Hello and welcome to this emotional wellness segment on The Impacts of Being Bullied. I am Nina Littleberry, Grief Counselor with Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, and I will be the facilitator for this emotional wellness segment. The 2019 National Center for Educational Statistics reported that one out of every five students reported being bullied. A higher percentage of male students report being physically bullied, and a higher percentage of female students reported being bullied by rumors and being excluded intentionally from activities. Those who are bullied are at a higher risk for their emotional wellness to be disrupted. Bullying is an ongoing and deliberate misuse of power in relationships through repeated verbal, physical, and or social behavior that intends to cause physical, social, and or psychological harm. It can involve an individual or a group of persons misusing their power or perceived power over one or more persons who feel unable to stop it from happening. Those that bully others oftentimes have experienced or may be presently experiencing life stressors that have disrupted their emotional wellness causing them to lash out at others in the form of bullying. Bullying is a negative outlet that bullies use to help them cope with their own feelings of powerlessness. However, according to the National Bullying Prevention Center, more than half, about 57% of bullying situations stop when a peer intervenes on the behalf of the person being bullied. Let's take a closer look at the different types of bullying. There's verbal bullying. This is name calling or insulting someone about their physical characteristics, such as their weight or height or other attributes like race, sexuality, culture, or religion. Physical bullying, hitting or hurting someone physically by shoving them, intimidating another person or damaging or stealing their belongings. Social bullying, this includes consistently excluding another person from activities or sharing information or images that will have a harmful effect on the other person. Electronic bullying, also known as cyberbullying, involves primarily verbal aggression. This is often done by sending threatening or harassing electronic messages and relational aggression that is spreading rumors about another person electronically. It can also involve property damage resulting from electronic attacks that lead to the modification, damage, or destruction of a use privately stored electronic information. Did you know that bullying can affect everyone? Those who are bullied, those who bully, and those who witness bullying. Bullying is linked to many negative outcomes, including impacts on mental health, substance use and abuse, and suicide. Therefore, it is very important to stay in tune with you by talking with them to determine whether bullying or something else in their daily activities is a concern. It is important to remember that bullying can happen in any number of places and forms such as at school, at home, on the playground, or recreational centers. Now, let's take a look at what some youth have to say about the impacts of being bullied. Hey there, welcome back to Pacer Talks About Bullying. I'm Bailey, we're glad you're here. As we know, bullying can impact a student's education, their physical and emotional health, and their well-being. In this week's episode, we're talking with middle school students all about bullying and its impact. They have some really great responses to share. Let's get into the episode. How do you think bullying impacts someone? Because it hurts them inside. It, when you call them names, it can almost, and sometimes it can physically, physically hurt them because they get pushed down by other people or like they just get like hit by other people. Um, they could get stomach aches, they could feel bad about themselves. It makes people feel not happy because it's not a nice thing to have happen in life. 
Do you think the impact of bullying is always obvious? Why or why not? Sometimes uh, people who get bullied try to hide it because they don't want anyone else to know. Um, but they should not hide it um, because I got bullied once and I hit it and it got worse. No, because sometimes they could be hiding it because they don't want anybody else to know. Kids hide it sometimes. I think kids hide it sometimes, I guess. And they don't tell their parents about this. How do you think bullying impacts a student's self-esteem or their self-confidence? When I think whenever like someone were to say like, hey, you, what are you doing here? Like, you're not supposed to be here because of your weight or something. Like, that can change the person's self-esteem because when they look at themselves later, they might think like they are too, I am too fat, I need to change or something. But you, but other people would be like, you're fine, you're perfect. And yet they still think they're not. Self-confidence might be um, that they don't feel the best about themselves. The self-esteem is like they might just be uh, lonely and they might not be loved because they're feeling bad about themselves. They might feel less confident, but they should feel really confident. How does bullying impact the way you may feel at school or feel about school? Um, it makes it makes you feel that you don't like school and you don't want to go to school ever again. Then they might not feel that they belong when they really do. People will not go to school if you're scared. If you're scared to go to school. Because they might not feel like comfortable speaking up for themselves. It might make them scared to go to school. It might make you feel like you're just um, invisible. No one sees you. Um, no one talks to you. No one wants to be by you. Do you think bullying can have long-term effects? Yes. It feels like if you feel a bit bullied, if you feel upset. Yes, because they could keep remembering it and then it never, they never stop thinking about it. Sometimes when someone says something, um, like you're not supposed to be here or what are you doing here? It can change someone's perspective of like, oh, I'm not, go I'm not supposed to go here. Oh, this is off limits or something like that. And it's not very nice for them because that can change their perspective about a lot of things. And that wraps up this week's episode of Pacer Talks About Bullying. Thank you so much to all of the amazing students involved in this video. We'll see you right back here next week. And remember, together we can help create a world without bullying. See ya! Mental health experts report youth who are bullied can experience physical, social, emotional, academic, and mental health issues. As a result, youth who are bullied are more likely to experience depression and anxiety, increased feelings of sadness and loneliness, changes in sleep and eating patterns, and loss of interest in activities they used to enjoy. These issues could persist into adulthood. They are more likely to experience physical health complaints, such as headaches and stomach aches, decreased academic achievements and school participation. They are more likely to miss, skip, or drop out of school. Now, let's shift gears for a minute and talk about some of the concerns of the youth who does the bullying. Youth who bully others oftentimes engage in violent and other risky behaviors that can carry over into adulthood as they are more likely to abuse alcohol and other drugs, get into fights, vandalize property, and drop out of school. 
engage in early sexual activity, have criminal convictions and traffic citations, be abusive towards their romantic partners, spouses, or children. Let's turn our attention to bystanders. Bystanders are those persons who witness others being bullied. Youth who witness bullying experience some of the same effects as the youth who is being bullied, as they are more likely to have increased use of tobacco, alcohol, or other drugs, have increased mental health problems, including depression and anxiety, and miss or skip school. Generally, children who are bullied have one or more of the following risk factors. They are perceived as different from their peers, such as being overweight or underweight, wearing of eyeglasses or different clothing, being new to a school, or being unable to afford what other kids consider cool. They are perceived as weak or unable to defend themselves. They are depressed, anxious, or have low self-esteem. They are less popular than others and have few friends. They do not get along well with others, seen as annoying or provoking, or antagonize others for attention. It is important to remember that if a youth identifies with one or more of the risk factors, this does not necessarily mean that the youth will be bullied. However, it is helpful to be mindful of the risk factors. Bullying is a major problem but it's one that you can help stop. People who bully may appear powerful. They may be popular or physically intimidating, but they are neither as confident nor powerful as they seem. Often people who bully secretly feel insecure and powerless. They bully to appear strong in the eyes of others. When you stand up to them and show support for a friend or peer who is being bullied, you take control away from those who are bullies. By learning how to react when you witness bullying, you can make a huge difference in the lives of others. Wiki How to Do Anything Well page offers six tips on how to support someone who's being bullied. First, position yourself as close to a person being bullied as possible. People tend to move away when bullying happens. Leaving the scene leaves the person being bullied alone, vulnerable, and embarrassed as they become more visible to bystanders. Instead, move towards the person being bullied and sit, walk, or stand alongside them. Now, safety for you and others is very important. If you sense that you might get hurt, leave and go quickly to get an adult. Next, ignore the person who's acting like a bully. Most cases of verbal bullying can be handled by ignoring it. People who bully want attention, so they are hoping that bystanders will stop and watch. If you ignore bullying behavior, you stop the bully from getting what he or she wants, and they will often stop. Even if someone who's bullying says something funny or clever, never laugh or respond positively. If you witness cyberbullying, never share these negative posts. Encourage others to support the person being bullied. As soon as you notice bullying is happening, Turn to the people around you and let them know that the behavior you are witnessing is not right. Then show them that you all need to do something to stop it. There are some simple tips that can help others overcome fear and do the right thing. First, identify the behavior as wrong. You can say something like, this isn't right, that's messed up, or this has gone too far. Next. Invite others to help you stop the bullying. You can say something like, we can't let this go on. Let's help them out, or we have to do something. Lastly, as you start to move towards the person being bullied, 
gesture for others to come with you. Shift the focus away from bullying. When bullying happens, people tend to freeze up and wait to see what will happen next. Instead of watching passively, you can determine what happens next and redirect everyone towards something positive. Change the subject and try to include the person being bullied in a positive way. You can say things like, this is too much drama for a Monday, or the bell's about to ring, let's go. Try to compliment the person being bullied in some way. Engage the person being bullied in conversation. Even if you don't know the person, you can ask them something simple like, if they have seen a recent movie or have weekend plans. If you're struggling to find something to say and things are heating up, create a diversion. For example, drop your books, slam a locker, or set off a timer on your watch or cell phone. Diversions break the tension and let everyone relook at what to do. Leave with the person being bullied. Often, the best way to stop a bullying situation is to help the person being bullied get away, especially if the bullying has attracted a large audience and things are getting tense. Encourage the person being bullied to leave with you and walk in the direction of an adult. You can say something simple like, hey, let's get out of here. Asking the person being bullied for help with something is a great strategy. You can ask for help with last minute homework, ask them to come with you on an errand, or even pretend that you lost something and need their help finding it. And lastly, reassure the person being bullied that it's not their fault. It can be hard not to take bullying to heart. Tell the person that's being bullied that the problem is not with them, just reminding them that bullies are the ones who feel insecure. This can be a real help. Say something like, you're really strong. The bully is the one who's weak because they need to pick on people to feel good. It's not cool. Tell them that you are free to talk if they feel upset in any way. Encourage them to tell an adult and offer to go with them when they report it. Share what you saw with a trusted adult. As soon as you can, tell an adult that you trust. Tell your parent, a teacher, a counselor, school nurse, or visit the school office and ask to meet with the principal. Report bullying, whether it happens at school, online, or anywhere. Follow up after reporting to make sure action was taken. Check in in a few days after reporting bullying and ask if action was taken or if any other information from you is needed. If you're not getting anywhere, tell a different adult. If bullying continues to be an issue in your school or community, continue to write down what is happening and follow up with adults such as a teacher, a counselor, a principal, or a youth director. Make sure the persons being bullied feel included. People who bully often pick on people who are already experiencing social exclusion or are unique in some way. These groups make easy targets because they may stand out or appear defenseless. A great way to prevent bullying before it starts is to make an effort to include and befriend people who are less likely to be included in activities with the more popular youth. If you see someone eating alone at lunch or walking by themselves, ask them to join you. Certain groups of people, such as LGBTQ youth, persons with disabilities, or members of minority groups, frequently become the targets of bullying. Bullying is hard on anyone, but because members of these groups typically experience more bullying than others, it's important to make sure you look out for them. Now, I need you to give close attention to this section. 
Forgive and include people who have bullied others. Don't make the mistake of judging someone who bullies as a bad person. Never try to bully them back or retaliate. Most people who bully just want attention, but are going about it in the wrong way. Help them find a more positive way to interact with others. If possible, try to compliment, include, or even befriend the person who bullied. You can either just pretend the bullying did not happen and strike up an unrelated conversation with the bully at a later date, or you can address the situation by saying something like, I realize it got a little heated back there, but I hope we can just let that go and get along with each other. You won't end bullying with a single action or event. If you want to really end bullying in your community or school, it requires an organized approach. Ask a teacher or parent to help you start a group that will focus on bullying. The committee can either be an informal group or an official school club, but it should include both students and adults. Some important actions you can take include mapping out where bullying typically takes place and making sure those areas are better supervised, holding regular assemblies to raise awareness, and making sure that your school or organization have firm rules and guidelines for addressing bullying. Now, let's take a quick look at how to help a friend who is being bullied. Well, guys, the results of yesterday's plant quiz were as varied as palms and ferns. <laughs> You'd have to be stupid not to waste this one. I bet KB blew it. <laughs> Cassandra, the only stupid one in this classroom is this poor fellow without a brain. And even he's smart enough to know that your comment is out of line. Hmm, something needs to be done about this. And I know just what to do. Okay, guys, today we're mixing it up like an acid and a base. New lab partners! Aww. Let's start with our first new pair, Melanie and KB. <gasps> Poor Melanie! What are we doing? Studying the effect of sodium bicarbonate on the photosynthesis of Elodia. Can you speak English, please? Basically, we're just mixing baking soda and water and feeding it to a plant. This will create carbon dioxide and speed up the plant's growth. Pretty cool, huh? This one needs a little more water. I got it. <gasps> what did I do? I think you grabbed the vinegar instead. Hmm, looks like someone made a mistake. Uh, actually, Mr. Bittner, Melanie and I were just testing the reactivity of sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Well, that wasn't exactly the assignment, but uh, all good scientists think outside the beaker. <laughs> uh, just remember, safety comes first. Saved by the bell, Mel. See you tomorrow, partner. I forgot my book. See you tomorrow, partner. Thank you for participating in this segment on emotional wellness. Again, I am Nina Littleberry, grief counselor with Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, the Department of Prevention and Wellness. Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, the Department of Prevention and Wellness, provides the service of grief counseling. We look forward to your participation on our continued conversations about emotional wellness.